Thanks so much for joining us today. On behalf of my colleague, Jake Carlson, I am Michaela Narlock, and we are excited to be presenting today, Champion Championing Institutional Data Sharing Efforts in the CNI pre-recorded project briefing. In today's presentation, we are going to discuss some recent research conducted by the Data Curation Network, or the DCN, and dive into an exciting upcoming project that Jake will share more details on. We invite you to follow along with our work and stay connected. You can contact us through the Data Curation Network website, with, and the URL is at the bottom of this slide, or our contact information, which is on the final slide. So let's get started. To kick things off, we wanted to set the scene with some recent DCN research. As part of a longitudinal study, members of the Data Curation Network collected data on Association of Research Libraries, or ARL, university members. In particular, we looked at which, which ARL members had an institutional repository and which had a standalone data repository. This work builds on previous research done by Hudson Vitale et al. in 2017 and Johnston and Coburn in 2020. In general, we want to get a better sense of how researchers are leveraging institutional support to share their research data. In this chart, the orange bars indicate the number of ARL institutions that had a standalone data repository in addition to an institutional repository. There is a lot to unpack here, but I just want to highlight that even since 2020, more institutions have implemented a standalone data repository. So it's clear that among ARL institutions, which we recognize are typically well resourced, there are investments being made in standing up and sustaining data sharing infrastructure. Another facet of the research was to identify the number of data sets being shared in both institutional and data repositories. I'm not going to spend long here, but we wanted to just kind of highlight that general trend since 2017, 2020, and now in 2023, that researchers are leveraging institutional structures to share their research data. Now, I could spend a whole 20 minutes just unpacking this data, but we will hope to have a publication in the coming months you can refer to, and in the intervening time, you can check out the data set, which is available at this QR code. To continue setting the scene, let's take a step back and look at the national perspective. With regards to data sharing in the United States, there has been increased attention on and demand for sharing data as openly as possible with necessary restrictions. This demand and attention increased in the summer of 2022 with the publication of two key documents from the federal perspective. First, on the right side of the slide, with the publication of the Desirable Characteristics of Data Repositories for Federally Funded Research, which detailed 14 um, high-level and intentionally broad characteristics of repositories in which federally funded data should be shared. Things like persistent identifiers, robust metadata, that sort of thing. Now, I want to just really emphasize that these are intentionally high level and broad because they are meant to be applicable for all federally funded research data. A few months after the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy released what has been come to known as the Nelson Memo. And while I know many of you watching this are likely familiar with the memo, I just wanted to highlight a couple of components to make sure that we are all on the same page. So first, uh, this memo was applicable to all federal funding agencies, regardless of their R&D. Data was explicitly identified as needing to be shared openly alongside publications. And there was the removal of an embargo period that allowed up to six months behind a paywall. Now we want those things out in the public as soon as possible. So with these two things in mind, knowing that data is being shared in institutional repositories and data repositories, and that there are these federal mandates, we in the DCN wanted to know, well, how do we align with those desirable characteristics referred to here as the DCDR? And where do we need to improve our repositories to be in alignment with them? So in the summer of 2022, we conducted our own little self-assessment uh, among our 17 member institutions that we had at the time. And based on this self-assessment, we found that we are in alignment, in alignment with quite a few of these uh, requirements, including the free and easy access because many of our repositories are open access, provenance, persistent identifiers, and metadata. But we found that we still had room to improve, of course, and some of the biggest challenges were handling sensitive data, Many of us did not feel prepared to uh, meet that need. 
as well as authentication, security, and integrity, and quality assurance. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Jake Carlson. All right. Thanks, Michaela. So as Michaela mentioned, it, it's really, it, it, the DCDR is written at a very high level, right? It's a government document and it needs to apply to a bunch of different types of repositories, which, you know, makes it a very useful document, but it also makes it hard to evaluate against, particularly when we talk about operational activities. So one thing that the DCDR mentions, for example, is the need for documentation for data repository practices. But the actual specifics of how much documentation is desirable or even sufficient is really unclear. And given that IRs host a wide variety of data types and serve researchers from many disciplines, we have the additional challenge of determining what standards to try and apply and to support good practice across multiple communities. So while the DCDR, I think, is a good start for us to consider how we um, standardize the, the work that we do, in practice, it's challenging to use. So moving on, um, as a result of, of the conversations we had and the, the challenges we faced in sort of operationalizing uh, the, the DCDR, we wanted to explore more about where things are right now with regards to research data services and institutional data repositories, as well as the kinds of things that we might apply to improving our services going forward. So we held a series of uh, virtual learning sessions uh, over the summer of 2023. The first one being really uh, understanding the effects or the impact of the desirable characteristics on funding agencies. So what were funding agencies doing uh, to implement uh, the desirable characteristics in, in their operations? Second, we looked at data re sharing readiness in academic institutions. So where are we in being able to support researchers in their uh, work to, to share their data in ways that others could understand, trust, and reuse? Third, we also took a look at uh, making the case for the services that, that libraries offer. So um, libraries, as, as we all know, I think offer a, quite a variety of, of uh, services that are important for supporting the, the research enterprise and data sharing in particular. How can we make the case for investment in institutional data repository services? Again, to ensure that researchers can follow through on the commitments they need to, uh, to do given the, the uh, grants that they have. And then finally, looking at how do we develop and mature IR technology platforms to support data sharing? Um, different types of platforms are used across different institutions. How do we develop their capabilities to better meet the needs of researchers who are trying to share their data? This uh, virtual learning series was, was quite a success. We had a number of amazing speakers and an average of 188 registrants uh, per, per session. So I think we really hit on something that was of interest to the larger research data community and libraries. Um, we heard a number of different themes from those uh, virtual learning series. First, we heard really a, a desire to, uh, to come together and to, to better integrate our systems to uh, connect to, to larger ecosystems that are out there, right? We we really re recognize that in a lot of ways, we are sort of nodes on a larger network and a desire to really make those nodes more robust and more connected was really a, a key important part of the virtual learning series that we held. But on the opposite side, we really understood that uh, investing in, in local needs and uh, understanding evolving community expectations from a local perspective was also a key part of the research data services that we offer. And there really needs to be some flexibility there to account and accommodate different types of data, different types of needs, and different types of situations. We also heard that institutional data repositories are more than just a technology, right? In fact, they're not the service, they're the means to the end to provide the service. They're the, they're the operations by which we offer a number of the services that we provide in, in libraries. We did see the, the, um, the desirable characteristics as a really useful communication and benchmarking tool, not just for ourselves and evaluating our own services, but in, in reaching out and connecting to uh, other institutions or other folks who are offering these kinds of services to, to have a larger conversation about where it is that we are and where it is that we want to go together as a community. And then finally, as always, metadata came up. Metadata, I think, is a, a perpetual topic of, of need, of interest, and uh, of, of, of future development in terms of improving the services and improving the value of the data that we have to share with others. So after the, uh, the four virtual learning series uh, in the summer of 2023, we really wanted a way to, to continue the conversation and to, to change it from uh, a series of, of presentations or, or seminars into more of a community-based event. And so with generous support from the NIH, um, we are hosting what we call the Summit for Academic Institutional Readiness and Data Sharing. 
a, a chance for us to come together and to have these kinds of conversations to think about where it is that we are and where it is we'd like to go as a community. Um, our agenda, it's, it's still being developed, but our basic three questions um, are, what is the current state of institutionally based data services and repositories? Where are we right now in our ability to handle the kinds of, of uh, needs that we're seeing from, from researchers and to respond effectively? Second, what are the current and emerging expectations for data sharing as identified in documents like the DCDR? And how can we best incorporate them into our local services, right? So how can we take the emerging best practices, uh, good standards, expectations, requirements that we're seeing uh, come out and ensure that we're operationalizing them in ways that are effective and, and meet these uh, expectations? And then finally, what challenges and opportunities are common to institutions and where could we work together more closely as a community to address them? I think one of the challenges we face as institutional based data services is that we have generally, I mean, we're certainly informed by larger needs and larger environments, but when it comes to spinning up our services, we're doing this institution by institution. And while there's a way to, I think, address local needs through that practice, I think we're losing out in ways that we could work together to be more effective and to be more connected with each other to uh, increase our capacity in, in doing this kind of work. And so we're really hoping to explore where as a community might we invest time, energy, and effort to advance all of our causes and help all of our services. So who should apply to this event? Well, you should. Um, we're really looking for a range of institutions that vary in size, research activity, and level of development and services and infrastructure for research data management and sharing. We're inviting applications from all institutions regarding of current classification, including historically black colleges and universities, Hispanic serving institutions, or other minority serving institutions. We really want a diversity of attendees that will not only benefit from this, but who can share their experiences and expertise with a larger community group of attendees. Um, applications are due to the STAIRS um, Summit uh, on May 17th, um, and we're uh, allowing uh, successful, applica uh, successful applicants to invite up to three institutional representatives. And they don't necessarily need to come from, from the library. So if, if you're also working with somebody from your office of research or somebody from your IT office, please bring them along. We'd like to have them, again, to increase the diversity and the, the nature of the conversations that we can have at this event. And thanks to generous support from the NIH, um, each representative will receive $1,000 as a travel stipend to cover the costs of attending the STAIRS event. So um, we hope that you'll consider uh, joining us at the STAIRS event and apply. If you have questions about the event or anything else that we've talked about in this presentation, please feel free to contact myself uh, or Michaela. Thank you very much.